mourning into dancing. Turn your sorrow into joy. Oh, praise the Lord. And name you the redeemed of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's time for the redeemed of the Lord to what? Say so. That's what the word says. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. I tell you, the Lord tonight is good. And his mercies endure forever to all generations. Hallelujah. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Amen to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All oh, glory to God. I am redeemed. I'm
God bless you tonight. You may be seated in His presence. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel happy in my soul. I feel good. Feel His presence. Feel the Word in me. Want to get out. Amen. Praise God. I'm just going to take it. Like Brother McCurry said, the Lord brings in who He wants to be here. Right. Yeah. And, and that's about what we do. Right. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I can tell you one thing. There's a stirring in here Sunday. My God. And Sunday morning I went home and told my wife, I said, it's very rare I get to just walk through that like I want to. And the revelation flowing and the people with such an ear to hear yes. that we don't have to rush through anything. Just take our time. Yes. You learn double. Yes. You learn double when that kind of anointing is here yes. and you're submitted to it. See, you can't submit to it unless you really got your mind on what God's saying, you know. But when it's like that, I can get double said in a meeting what I normally get said. And the follow-up Sunday evening, same anointing, just intensify. And man, what a prayer line. I tell you what I felt, God. Amen. And I like to see God's people shout and get blessed. I, I am like the old fellow, Lord, give us a shouting service. That's kind I like. Amen. And they done some shouting in here Sunday night. They're tearing that carpet up. Amen. I wish they'd tear it all up and I wouldn't have to tear it up when it's time to put the new down. So get busy tonight. Amen. Cut a hole in it. Hallelujah. But we're so thankful for that anointing. Amen. And all the people that was here Sunday, visitors here and Sunday night and all those people getting blessed. God's a good God. Amen. Sister Linda came through her surgery beautifully. She done excellent. Uh, she only needed one bypass and it only took about an hour and 20 minutes uh, before the doctor came back out and told her that all was well. And uh, she had a sore day yesterday, but I talked to her right before church, and she is having a lot better day today. Amen. Feeling real good. They had released her to get up and down as she wanted. And then there's talk that she might go home tomorrow evening. So she's doing doing well. Amen. One thing she had been doing faithfully was getting out and walking every day. And the doctor said that helped him immensely because she had built up the muscular part of her heart so good uh, that it was kind of just taking care of itself. Amen. He said the muscle side of her heart was in just impeccable condition. Praise the Lord. So we're glad for that. Glad the Lord has brought her through. Yet another time, God has took his hand and put it right on her and brought her through. Amen. She's a miracle. Glory to God. She ain't in the making either. She done made a miracle over and over again. Praise the Lord. We're thankful for that. Hallelujah. We want to invite you not to forget our services coming up on Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Amen. Right here with Sunday school class, early class. Then we'll move into the late service at 11 o'clock. Come back at 6 o'clock. Do it all over again. Don't ever know what's going to happen. Don't ever know what the Lord's going to say. I think I know what He said, what He'll say tonight, and still don't know what all He might get us into. But I'm willing to walk with Him wherever He wants to take me. Amen. Would you be so kind as to get an offering prepared to bring to the Lord tonight? Amen. And we just bless you and thank you for all of your giving to the work of God. Amen. Bring it to the Lord in Jesus' Bible's turned to Psalms 
tonight, we'll invite you to open to the second chapter of Esther. I done preached through the first one without ever reading it, so I'm going to try to read something out of the second chapter uh, tonight. We're getting into deep waters tonight. Good stuff. Amen. And of course, it's all been good, and I'm going to have to watch the time because I'm starting early on the clock. And the place where I usually hunt for the long hand to quit, if I wait on it tonight, I'll hold you over. So I'm going to try to be mindful of the time. Amen. I do that when I go home and they go to tell my wife it's so She says, tells them every time, there ain't no way it's over yet. She don't believe it. But it, sometimes I surprise them. Amen. Probably surprise you when I quit early. Amen. But in the book of Esther, hallelujah. I want to begin the second chapter and the uh, uh, seventh verse. And I'm going to tell you ahead of time some of this we're going to break down together just verse by verse because if I don't, uh, you'll miss some of the good in it. Amen. And I want you to get all the flavor out of it because you you need to know these things. Glory to God. Need to know them in your spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 7 of chapter 2. And it says, And he brought up Hadassah, which is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful. Well, glory to God. Whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took her for his own daughter. Now, you and I know already that the first principle revealed in that verse is the principle of the Melchizedek order. The Melchizedek order, for those of you that don't know that, uh, in the very beginning of the, of the days of Abraham, before Abraham ever was able to produce a seed, he was a hundred years old, he was beyond the years of that, and his wife 90, and beyond the years of conception. And yet God came to Abraham and promised him that in his seed would all the nations of the earth be blessed, and Abraham thought that God meant he was going to use an old custom in that day and make his servant heir to everything he had, and that would be his seed. And God said, no, I'm talking about the seed that's going to come out of your loins. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. And so Abraham, still unable to produce, uh, went down to uh, the battle of the five kings, the Bible calls it. Five, anytime you're dealing with five, uh, you're in the spiritual side, you're dealing with grace. But in the natural side, you're dealing with what? The five natural senses. Hello. And unless you get delivered from judging everything in God according to your physical senses, you're going to have trouble going very far. Because everything in God operates by faith not by senses. It's a word whether you feel it or not. It's a word whether you see it or not. It's a word whether you hear it or not. It's a word whether you can touch it yet or not. Say amen, somebody. It's all the word the word's got to work. It can't fail. So he goes down there and slaughters five kings and you're going to have to slaughter every one of them senses until you can take God at His word because he ain't never failed you yet. And he's always on time. Well, glory to God. Hello. He may not come when you want him. Hello. But he'll be there right on time. He's an on time God. Even when he's four days late, he ain't late. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even when the bill says in 30 days, God's still in control. God's still on the throne. Yeah. It's going to come in like He said it's going to come in. You looking at God, you looking at some things right now and don't know how the Lord turned it, but He turned it. Yeah. Well, glory to God. Yeah. 
You don't know how he made a way for it, but you got it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You're looking at things tonight you don't know what you're going to do with, but you're going to do it, and you're going to have it, and you're going to pay it, and it's going to come in. Well, glory to God. How do you know? Because the Word works. That's how I know. And so what happens is, out of nowhere, everybody say out of nowhere. Well, there's got to be somewhere. Nothing can't come out of nothing. There's got to be somewhere. He came out of an invisible realm. And it was Melchizedek, and he was a supernatural appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he came and gave Abraham what? Bread and wine. And when he did, Abraham came alive on the inside. Yeah. And at a hundred years old, he, he fathered, amen, two sons yeah. from, a, from a dead body. Yeah. But the one son was a son of the flesh, yeah. and the other son was a seed of promise. And the seed of promise didn't come through in none other than Sarah's womb. But we read that principle. We don't know a whole lot about Melchizedek from that book. And then David talks about him again in Psalm 110. We still don't know where he come from. Till we get to the book of Hebrews. And we read Hebrews 6, 7, and 8. And when we read Hebrews 6, 7, and 8, we find the same line that we found here. It says that she is without father and mother. That's exactly what Hebrews says he, about Melchizedek. He's without father, without mother, without beginning or ending of days, without descent. Yeah. Are you listening yeah. to me? All that is is showing you that the promise of God don't come by pedigree or by bloodline or by birth or by race or creed or custom or gender. Come on now. The promise of God comes by the Spirit. Hallelujah. By the Spirit. And that ain't all. We get in this principle that of, 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 or in this verse the principle of what? Adoption. Well, glory to God. Well, hallelujah. She didn't have a mother or father. But Mordecai adopted her as his own. Can you say amen? And the Bible tells you and I that we've been adopted. We've received the adoption of sons. Now, the thing, beautiful thing about uh, the, the adoption part of it is that simply means you was handpicked. You was chosen. Well, glory to God. See, I can't, you, you just come into your birth family, you don't choose who you're born into. And they don't choose what they get neither. Can you say amen? But in the line of adoption, well, glory to God, you're chosen. You're handpicked. Well, glory to God. And Ephesians 1 tells you, you're chosen in, in Christ before the foundation of the world and then turns around and tell you in order that you may receive the adoption of sons. The word chosen means you came out of him. The word adoption means you're going back into what you come out of, my God. So you hadn't just been chosen. You've been ordained. You're not just ordained. You're under the election of the seed of God. Not only that, you received, now I'll just give you some of these scriptures. Romans 8 says you've not received the spirit of bondage again under fear. But you've received the spirit of what? Adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. And if we're, uh, and then he said that we're heirs of God. If we're heirs of God, we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Well, glory to God, the Spirit also bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Mm. Not because we happen on something, but because He chose us in Him. Before the foundation, see, you didn't just stumble on this church, stumble on salvation, and no more than Esther just stumbled on that palace. It was set up already. Uh, heaven, you've got to understand, these things in your life are set up. They're ordained. You've come into what you're in now because it was ordered of God. Hallelujah. It was preordered, preordained. Well, glory to God. Amen. 
And so that's part of what the church has got to realize. She's got to wake up and get the understanding. She's been sent to this earth for this moment, yeah. right now, mm -hmm. to manifest the glory of God right. in this earth. Yeah. That's what the kingdom message boils down to. Yeah. You're here. He's here. He's in you. You're in Him. Glory to God. Right. Yeah. Amen. And you're here to demonstrate the power of God in this earth. But most of the church world don't even calculate that system. All they think is they just go to church and do the best they can and go home and try all week till next Sunday and go back and try it all over again. Come on now. Well, you ain't trying to learn how to drive a car. You're trying to learn. You know, well, really, it ain't a matter of trying. It's a matter of being. Yeah. Being something that He's already ordained you to be. Hallelujah. And so, look at verse 8. Now, it came to pass... When the king's commandment and decree was heard. So there's got to be a people who knows how to hear the voice of God. People who know how by the Spirit to understand kingdom talk. Well, glory to God. See, kingdom talk is what's going on now. What's God doing now in his body? Well, glory to God. What's he saying now? Amen. Now there's a lot of noise going on among different uh, sect uh, sectors of people are concerning what God is saying and it's a different, every one of them is saying a different thing. Yeah. Some of them saying it's over. Some of them saying it's worse than it's ever been. Some of them saying it's going to the dogs. Yeah. Well, glory to God. Some of them saying, uh, you know, that, that we're going to get poorer and poorer. Yet the Bible said the wealth of the wicked. Is going to be transferred into the hands of the righteous. Somebody say praise the Lord. But then you got another voice, and this voice doesn't sound afraid. Well, glory. This voice doesn't sound shaky. This voice doesn't sound upset. This voice doesn't sound like anything's wrong. This voice, why? Because when you talk kingdom talk, you're talking throne talk. You're talking dominion talk. You're talking ruling talk. You're talking with authority and power. Where the word of a king is, there's power. So we hear a different kind of preaching around here. We don't hear that old glory to God, barely making, holding on stuff. No, we hear messages of power and dominion. And the, what is it? It's the word of the overcomer. We're preaching overcoming. Glory to God. Not death, life. Hallelujah. Amen. Not it's over. It hadn't even begun. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Now the trouble in that realm of all that when it came here, the king's word, is uh, they have to write a book and then six months later they have to revise that book and then two years later they have to print an updated edition because they keep getting it wrong. Well, shout me that. They keep getting it wrong because they ain't heard the king's voice yet. Mm -hmm. They've heard their preacher's voice. Or they've heard a man's voice. Or they've heard whatever. But they ain't heard it come out of the king. See, when the king voice breaks through, everybody goes to move it because it's a word of power. It's a word of dominion. And it came to pass when everybody heard the king's decree, when they heard the king's voice, what they do, they got to move it. They got in gear. Glory be to God. There's a beautiful scripture over talking about Solomon. It said Solomon sat upon his throne and had rest from all his enemies. And it said when he sat down on the throne, he had a big old line on the left side and a big old line on the right side. Glory to God. What does that mean? That means he's king. He conquered. There wasn't no, oh glory to God, wasn't no sound of war heard in his kingdom because his word was power. His word was authority. And if you ever get the revelation that you're a king as well as a priest in God, every influence that tries to come into your life, glory to God, you will speak with power and authority and take dominion. Mm -hmm. And that is the first command God ever gave.
save mankind in this earth. Take dominion. Mm -hmm. Subdue it. Have authority mm -hmm. over it. Amen. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Mm -hmm. Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Mm -hmm. Thou hast crowned him with glory. He couldn't crown you if you wasn't royal. He couldn't crown you if you wasn't a king. And that goes against a lot of the grain of religion because they don't want a man to think more of himself than he ought to throw all that false humility in the church. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. They sat down and let sickness ravage and pillage through their home. Sat down and let poverty rule their finance. Mm -hmm. Said, I ain't let nothing rule me except the king's force. Come on. At least give me a Methodist nod. Hallelujah. I ain't letting nothing rule in my vineyard except the word of a king. Where the word of a king is, there's power. Hallelujah. And when you decree that, and I want to say something else concerning that verse. How does faith come? By hearing. Well, praise the Lord. Hearing comes how? By the word of the Lord. Well, is the Lord king? then His Word ought to produce something in us, come on now, that is able to distinguish His voice from all other voices. Amen? Now how many of you understand that when we go back to the scene with Vashti, she did not heed the King's voice. No, sir, she didn't listen to it. She said, I ain't coming. I'm not coming. What is that? That's open rebellion. Now, how many of you understand in the earth there are people who are not responsible to the degree others are because they've never been taught to hear the voice of God? Yeah. Never known the ways of God. Mm -hmm. Don't even know what we're talking about tonight. Amen. Hello, there ain't no way you could bring that person in and hold them as accountable. As us who have sat in it all our lives. You could never do that. Not and be justified in it. But how many of you know on the other hand there's some folks that already know what to do yeah. mm -hmm. but they ain't going to do it because they're walking out in rebellion. Yeah. And rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft mm -hmm. and stubbornness is as idolatry. Can you say amen? And how many of you know somebody right now that if they just simply would do what they do to do they'd turn situations plumb around. I mean it just it changed overnight. Amen. Somebody said, you know, I don't understand why they will. Yes, you do. Pride. Yeah. Pride. Mm -hmm. Well, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Don't want to change. Mm -hmm. Don't want to change. Yeah. Well, glory. Um, well, you know, uh, you sat around, hold on to them eight tracks and hold on to them real to real tapes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And say you ain't going to use a CD mm -hmm. and rebel all you want. Yep. But the day they tell you there ain't no more a track and there ain't no more, mm -hmm. come on now, guess what you'll do? You'll do like the rest of us done. You'll go down there and get your CD player mm -hmm. and you'll start playing. How many know some folks ain't going no other way mm -hmm. but for what's a running now to run out? You can't have that. The king said, look, you can't have a feast while I'm having one. Mm -hmm. Get over here and join this feast. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. We're not going to preach two words. Mm -hmm. We're not going to preach two messages. Mm -hmm. We're going to preach one word. Well, glory to God. We're going to preach the sound the alarm inside. We're going to blow the trumpet. Come on now. And she said, oh no, I ain't. I'm not coming in there. He said, yes, I want to crown you. I want to honor you. I want you to stand with me. Come on now, in my throne. Have this same anointing. Have this same power. Work the works that I work. She said, oh no, we're not cutting out. So what else to do? What else is there to do? Cut off that feast. It has to stop. Yeah. It can't continue to operate. Glory to God. And there are people right now that, I, that you and I know that the Lord's getting ready to cut off the wine. He's getting ready to cut off the feast of a drawer. What will they do? They'll run right back where they belong. That's what they'll do. Hey, Amen. They'll get back in Father's house. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They'll get back in Father's house and come back to Father's table and they'll start eating table food 
he did. Amen to God. I'm not going to listen for any other voice. I want to hear the call of the king. The voice of the king. And so when the voice of the king came, I want every fair maiden. Oh, praise the Lord. Now that God is getting ready to narrow it down to where you get to the bride. Oh, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. We can't forget about Gideon's crew. Oh, hallelujah. That first number was in the multiplied thousands. And God said, you got too many. Come on now. Send them home. Tell everybody you don't want to go. And that's the first elementary principle. Stay where you're celebrating. Not where you're tolerated. If you preacher, if you got to spend every week trying to get your people to like you, you need a new congregation. You killing yourself trying to please man. Get out of that box. My God, if you have to go preach to a few old bull cows in the field somewhere, I believe God will let somebody pull off that road. And listen to what you've got to say if you're really called of God and really have a word to deliver. The Lord will bring them in. And how many of you know we don't tell God to who to bring in this house and we accept what He brings in this house? If He brings in the homeless, if He brings in the drug addict, if He brings in the alcoholic, if He brings in the, the, those that are broken, whatever the case. If you, But I'll tell you, you can get so used to that that you even won't realize He'll bring them in from the high place. Yes. Whatever he brings in, he brings in. Well, glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you this, he narrows it down. And Gideon said, whoever don't want to be here. And that's the way it is, folks. We no longer going to beg people to come back to church. You're not going to come here because I talked you into it. You're going to come here because you're feeling God and because you're getting blessed and because you're getting fed. And that's the only reason you're going to come here. Amen. Amen. How many of you feel that way about people in your life? Now, if you don't want to be here, go home. If, who feels that way? If you don't want my company, don't hang around me. If you bet we've done with a dollar bus every time you're here, then don't come around. My God, nobody wants a bus all the time. It's time to go out. Glory to God. It's time to outgrow all of that stuff. So if you get in and say, you don't want to be here, go home. Boy, half of them took off. And then, then God said, get it, get it. You still got too many. Well, praise the Lord. Here we are trying to build a mega church and God's cutting them off by the thousands. Hello. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, so Gideon said to the Lord, well, how will we, how will we separate them this time? How will we decipher between the two? And the Lord said, this time, won't you go down to the brook? Won't you go to the water? God said, well, how'd you do the brook? Mm -hmm. Come on. Then he did what? Drive the brook up and send him to a well. He fell of the raider, now it's time to be fell of the woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Yeah. So here comes Gideon to the water, and the Lord says to Gideon, they get down there, get them down there, and watch them. Watch how they drink. Mm -hmm. If they get down there like an old dog or a beast, mm -hmm. come on now. Don't yeah. care who they help. Right. Don't care if they've watched out for their brother. Mm -hmm. Don't have no respect for the ministry. Don't have no honor for the set man or woman of the house. Mm -hmm. Just put their old head right down, face down in there like an animal. Yep. And slurp it up. And they are doing it. Yep. God said, send them home. Mm -hmm. I mean, that might be your best deacon down there. Mm -hmm. Drinking out of that water like that. God said, send them home. Yep. How many of you know those people who come in church just for what they can get out of it? Right. Well, shout me down now. Just looking for how they can be took care of. Never cared. When the Bible said we ought to bear, say it with me, one another's burdens. Come on now. So what did the Lord say to him? He said, now look at them other fellows. They was watching the whole time. Watching out for the ministry. Watching out for one another. Watching out to see if the enemy... 
was going to invade that mountain. So instead of him drinking it up like a beast and lapping it up like an animal, they dip their hand. You know the hand means a fivefold mess. They dip it up and bring it to their mouth. Come on, somebody. Are you willing to drink water out of God's hand ministry in this hour? Glory to God. If you are, then you've been selected, chosen for that overcoming company that's going to have power well, glory to God. In the day of battle, they're going to stand. In the day of trial, they won't falter. You hear me? When they're tested, they'll stand. When they're tried, they'll stay true. Come on now. They won't get mad. They won't leave you. They'll stand with you. Amen. So the Lord's going to sing to that. He bring all the maidens. And when all the maidens got in, you'll read there a man's name. It looks kind of like Haggai. It's really Haggai or Haggai, but you said however you feel like you ought to say it. I don't much matter to me just so you get this part of it. He ain't nothing more than the Holy Ghost who's been sent to prepare a bride. Oh, And the Bible said he had a custody over all of the king's babies. And you better hear me, when Esther came to that place, she came from nowhere, she was a nobody, and you better believe what God's getting ready to do ain't coming from the high towers, and it ain't coming from the big television stations, it's going to come out of the wilderness, that's where the message is coming out of. People still can't buy that. They think it done. No, sir, it's not going to be Padinus numbers that burst this man child. It's going to be a barren woman that starts singing. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. It's going to come from little old places all over the world. Hit out where God has his ministry. Hit out. Amen. Ready to be revealed for such a, a time as this. Amen. Now you can think just because something's big, it's blessed. I'm telling you, if that's so, then the Holy Ghost is anointing every ball game that played on Sunday. They got record-breaking crowds. Huh? If noise was enough, they got noise. If movement was enough, they got movement. Just let somebody knock that ball far enough. Let that touch down. Just barely get over that line when they need them, need them to score and tell me if they care whether they lose that dignity or not. <laughs> Come on now. Him men go to hug it on one another, slap it one another, take them by the helmet and move their head around. Look like they're laying on the hands, you know, in church. Hey Amen. Why? They're excited. They're happy. Hello. But I'm telling you now that God's got a remnant, glory to God, that's been hit out all this time. And now she's been hit down there. In fact, when you read, they don't even know what country she's from. And Mordecai said, don't reveal where you come from. Glory be to God. <laughs> I won't tell you something I post. It ain't where you come from. It's where you're headed to. Glory to God. You might have come from Skid Row, might have come from the ditch, might have come out of jail, might have come from a broke family, but I got news for you tonight. You're coming into the palace. You're coming into the high house of the king. And the Bible said the Holy Ghost was standing there waiting on them. Come on in this house. And, then, and, and every one of you knows that anything God does is worth finding out. He does it in how many? Threes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know how many transitions there was to get to the king? Three. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Esther was brought into the main house with all the rest of the maidens and that was known as the virgins. Mm -hmm. The word virgin in the Old Testament, you know this means hidden ones. See, nobody don't know what's going to come of it yet. It does not yet appear. Or we shall be. But when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. Some of you don't even know that you're going to be anointed. No blind eyes. Unstop deaf ears. Some of you don't even know it, but you're going to lay your hands on the dope addict and they're going to get delivered. 
Some of you don't even know it, but you're going to go by and speak a word to somebody broken and God's going to heal their mind. Hallelujah. You don't know what you're being set up for. That's the reason you got to walk in around where you can hear the king speak. Amen. Because he's getting ready to give out decrees. And if you decree a thing, and come on now, what's the word say? It'll be established unto you. Yes. So Haggai took a hold of them, kept them for his own. My God. Mm -hmm. And then they had a time of transition. But but uh, anyway, I don't want to leave nothing good out, so let me not get the cart ahead of the horse. But there were many maidens. And oh, I know what I want to tell you. There are many called, mm -hmm. but few are chosen. Many is called, but few is chosen. Amen. And so, uh, the Bible says that this Haggai, look at verse 9. That's that verse I was hunting. Where it says he preferred her. Look in verse 9. It says, and he preferred her towards the end of the verse. He preferred her and her maids unto the best place. Well, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Well, the word preferred means to promote or to change. Yeah. Glory to God. You get under the Holy Ghost and get in with the Holy Ghost and something happens, you start changing. You start getting ready for something big. Yeah. You're changed from glory unto glory. Hallelujah to God. You're coming in this house. You're sitting here. The Holy Ghost, just like that man was watching over them women, the Holy Ghost is overseeing this thing. And he prefers you, or he promotes you, or he causes you to change, or to move, or to transition to the what? Best. The best. Hello? The best. That's where we at. The best. The best one has been saved for last. The word best means goodness, or to show one's goodness. To delight in, to favor. It means beautiful, fine, precious, pleasure, prosperity, wealth, and sweetness. My God. And everybody say that was the first round. And here we are running around. Brother Howe said 2020, 19 should be 20 years later. And at best, all we got is a mixture of the real truth. And we're supposed to be in the first, at least in the first round. At least. Yeah. And the first round yeah. is where the curse is broke. Yeah. And I'm redeemed from sin, sickness, poverty. Come on, shout me down now. Mm -hmm. And still badly. Mm -hmm. In some areas. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with all three. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you can sin with your mouth. Yeah. And you can sin with your thought. And, so, and when you say sin, when you thought everybody was more stinky, thinking dirty, you can think you want to hit somebody right between the eyes and knock their head off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You can be standing there smiling and thinking, I'd like to just whoop you up one mm -hmm. side down the other. Mm -hmm. And how many know that ain't godly? Yeah. And that ain't sanctified. Yeah. Come on now, church. Yes. We still fooling around with sickness. And they've been redeemed from it for 2019 years. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And still having to pray up money yeah. to pay them bills. Yeah. And we've been redeemed from poverty. Yeah, that's right. We better hear the voice of the King. Yeah. Yeah. We better get a hold of this Holy Ghost revelation. Yeah. Glory to God. He's brought us to the place of wealth, place of beauty, place of power, place of the best, place of His goodness, place of delight. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And then if you look in verse 11, we've got, I don't have time to finish. I've done run out of time almost. But uh, if you look in verse 11, and we'll probably have to close with this because I want you to see something wonderful. We'll find out where the bride is enters into an intercession ministry because it says that Mordecai did what? He walked daily. <laughs> he walked daily. In the, court, in the court of the women to find out if Esther was alright. How was she doing? How is she? Is she at peace? Come on. Is she well -being? Now, Mordecai walking to and fro in that gate every day is just another picture of the Word of God telling us that he ever lived. 
to make intercessions. You see, I'm not in this thing alone. I got help. I got help. Jesus said, Peter, I prayed for you. Come on. That your faith fail you not. And when you're strengthened, convert the rest of your brethren. Hello, church. But you see, here's the thing. Esther not only received intercession, tell the Lord right now, raise your hands and tell Him you receive His intercession. And the Bible says He in inter ever liveth to make intercession. So I want you to know now I receive Heaven's intercession on my behalf. But I also want you to know that God will require the bride to come into a ministry of prayer that is beyond words. It is the ministry of the Holy Ghost prayer. There's only one kind of prayer that will really profit, and that's spirit prayer. Come on now. In fact, the Bible says when we pray any other way, we don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Now I'm gonna make a statement here, and don't, 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 uh, don't flinch at it. Just listen to it, let it sink down deep. That tells me if I'm gonna be in the bride, I got to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, how can one say that? Because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Jesus. Yes. Come on now. But I'm gonna have to have more than just the, than just the witness of the Holy Ghost. Come on, I'm gonna have to come on over into the what? Baptism. In the Holy Ghost. Yeah. What's baptism? That's the fullness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be much good to this thing. I can pray what I think, but I really don't know how to pray as I ought until the Holy Ghost comes on me. Yeah. Well, glory. Hey, I've got to come into an intercession myself. It's not enough for heaven to cry. Earth has got to cry as one with heaven's voice. Glory to God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. Do you understand this? Lord, I wish I could preach this how I wanted to. If the earth don't intercede, then it won't do no good just for heaven to intercede. No, sir. God's put that much power in the hands of the church. He's entrusted her with the ability to unlock the supernatural. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 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 Be not short-handed where prayer is concerned. For I have given thee multiple tools of operation. Many avenues to touch me, to contact me, to commune with me, and to speak with me. Get involved with what the Holy Ghost is saying in this house, saith the Lord. Yield your tongue, yield your voice, yield your mind, yield your heart, and allow me to pray the will of God through me in this earth, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Shabbat. Mordecai was the first one to start it. He walked every day and said, How is she? How is she? How is she? Come on now. Do you remember when the old king went to the gate of that mouth of the den and hollered in and asked Daniel the same thing? Is it well with you? Are you all right? He, he said, No, old king, live forever. The Lord has sent his angel. Remember when the prophet came and asked the woman, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? What about that boy? She said, Here it is. Well, glory be to God. How do you know it's well? I'm going after the man of God. The man of God has got the power. He's coming in here and turn this thing around. Are you hearing me? Every day he said, how's Esther? How's Esther? How's Esther? I'm so glad he's touched with the feeling of my infirmity. And by my infirmity, it don't mean sickness. Come on. It means... He knows that I'm in an earthly realm. He knows that I'm trying to live a spiritual life even though I'm housed in a carnal body. But he's touched by the feeling of my infirmity. He knows I want to walk in heavenly places. He knows I want to. And so every day he went and inquired. Every day he went and inquired. Every day he went and inquired. Hello. But we'll find out the Lord let me get there that there came a time when he no longer was walking. 
in that same chapter on down in the, I don't remember if it's the 12th verse, maybe a little after that, the Bible said he started sitting. Now if you were reading, you'd ever read Watchman Nee's book, Sit, Walk, and Stand, yeah. you'd understand. He was sitting in heavenly places. Yeah. He no longer had to walk no more because she had obtained the favor of the king. And if she had obtained the favor of the king, then there was a bride in the house who now held the, the, the ability, come on now, to operate and function. And the bride that was in the house knew God, knew the Spirit, knew how to pray. My God, it don't do to give somebody power who knows how to pray. You want to talk about a stirring and a shaking up, let somebody get in power who believes in prayer. Yeah. All this bunch that mocks us Pentecostals thinks we're all idiots and, and lame brain because we jerk and shout and have Holy Ghost fits. Come on now. Yeah. Thinks we're all backwoods and old school and don't know the times. We ahead of schedule. Right. We got a prayer life. Hallelujah. We hear from God ahead of time on the matters. Can you say amen? amen? Yeah, he sat in the gate instead. And while he sat in the gate, you know what happened? The Lord began to let him hear things mm -hmm. that would save yes. the life of the king. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. And when the time comes way well on down in the book, that the enemy, the old Amalekite, Haman, which ain't nothing more than a carnal man always trying to stop the work of the Spirit and its multiplication rose up and he moved into another position instead of, I should just shut up because I'll probably re-preach this, gift, but instead of him sitting in the gate in his robe they gave, he was a, he was a, a nobleman in the palace, he took his robe off and put sackcloth on it. Oh yes. There's a time for public intercession. Yes. Public prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on the Lord to tell me to have a prayer meeting again. And I won't yes. have one until He tells me. Because right. I got so disgusted with how I got before I threw it out the window. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can't get saints to pray. Mm -hmm. You can't even get this church to come together and pray. Mm -hmm. Not publicly. Mm -hmm. You can get them to pray. I'm not saying they don't privately talk to the Lord, but when it comes to calling this body to an open prayer meeting, uh -huh. Amen. Hallelujah. you about better take an antidepressant yeah. before you come in this house. Because uh -huh. you're going to find out where your real prayer warriors are at. Mm -hmm. Shout it down. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I might not say that if I quit quitting late, but I'm quitting early, right? So make mm -hmm. you so happy you won't hear now I say yeah. say the key is in thy hand yea the way has been made clear before thee every door will open if thou would only put the key in and turn it by prayer and supernatural seeking of my face you shall not have anything that will withstand thee but all doors will move at thy command and will open for thee and give thee access to the heavenly things saith the Lord hallelujah Hallelujah. There comes a time for public prayer. And then again, one of the problems is not just with people joining in it, 
most folk, when they do join, have got so many inhibitions yeah. when it comes to prayer. Worried about how one sounds, right. worried about whether they get the wording right, worried about what. None of that matters. Right. It's the spirit of prayer yeah. that matters. Yeah. I said it's the spirit of prayer mm -hmm. that matters. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Not even the sound of it, it's the spirit of it mm -hmm. that makes the difference. And if we ever do get a corporate people that is not afraid mm -hmm. of the spirit of prayer yeah. and the sound that it'll make, right. oh, praise God. Now, there's, he's, uh, uh, Mordecai, he won't call him Nehemiah. <laughs> Mordecai, you cannot sit in the king's gate with sackcloth mm -hmm. against the law. Yeah. Every day he showed up. Mm -hmm. Every day he prayed. And they came and told Esther what was going on, and Esther said, Here, send him these clothes. Tell him to put these clothes on. Mordecai said, Send her clothes back to her. I don't need her clothes. Right. This isn't about what I'm wearing. This is about an intercession that I've entered into. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. And tell her while you're at it. Uh -huh. Tell her while you're at it that there is no escaping this. And not to think that she shall find a way of escape. Well, the church is still hunting an escape. And still praying for an escape. And I'll get on that later. Do you know how many people's misled by that doctrine? Yeah. And that one word they hold to like candy and it ain't even in the Bible. Yeah. And every day, and every service, and every time they pray, oh, if Jesus would just hurry up and get them. What? Oh, my God! Get you. You ain't even got off the bottom yet. You still sucking on a pacifier. You still in the nursery. And you want him to come get you. He ain't going to get nothing. He ain't coming for nothing until he's ready for him to come to. Somebody say, man, ain't got to have something come for him anyhow. Praise God. He's not going, he is not coming to set head of an emaciated, half watered down a week fizzed out bride. He's coming after a beautiful. Amen. And somebody said, what is he going to do when he gets her? He's going to rule in her midst. Yeah. And somebody said, what else is he going to do? He's going to set head of the body. And somebody said, what else is he going to do? He's going to anoint you to do the greatest works you've ever done in your life. So if your life dream is to stroll around like a shaman commercial <laughs> floating on a cloud strumming a heart, you better get a new revelation. You, you are it. You ain't hearing what's being said. If that's the picture that you hold to, and if your idea of heaven is just to lay around and float around on a flat. No, man, the Lord's anointing you to do a work in this hour. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I want to be that one that can pray spirit pray. I want to be that one. He said, don't bring me no clothes. I don't need no clothes that you put on. I'm going to wear this sackcloth. I'm praying. And furthermore, he said, guess what? You've been called. Your number's been called. Whoa! And, that, and it ain't no more soaking in a tub of pretty spicy. Yeah. And it ain't no more getting weighted on hand and foot by Haggai. Now, she's going to have to enter in the life and immortality yeah. and pray herself out of death yeah. and believe God to save her whole nation. Yeah. And she prays a three-day prayer. And we're getting ready in this hour to shout out a higher. I wish it was Sunday. I'd finish this. Father, help us tonight. Help us to see. Help us to get a hold of it. My God, we're sending out changes of raiment to folks that don't need a change. They're wanting to pray it through, God. We're trying to hold back the very thing that's been meant to happen. From the beginning, we are sent here. Ordained to be here. Oh, Father, take them not from the world, but keep them through thine own name. Anoint us in this hour. Heal them a heart, shout them a heart. God, we need the greatest anointing we've ever flowed in right now. We need the most powerful preaching we've ever heard. Let it happen in the body of Christ, I pray in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. God bless you tonight. Hallelujah.